Hello everybody, once again I am Lehman Crafting Jr. aka Zorvala Chan Less Than Guru and today day 21 of the 31 day character creation challenge I will be doing yet another D&D. This will be the current edition of D&D, D&D 5th edition, although um, it doesn't say anything about the edition. I think uh, for the longest time they were trying to call it something else like D&D Next um, and, and things like that. Um, they didn't want to add that 5th edition, but everybody calls it 5th edition because um, even though it's not actually a true 5th edition, but the one previous to this was 4th, the one previous to that uh, was 3rd. But um, I've never played this, I will admit. I have the book. I've had the book a few years, um, probably 3 or, or 4 years. And I just haven't had a Game Master who wanted to play, and I'm not going to Game Master this, but... Since I know that Dungeons and Dragons is the most popular uh, role-playing game, the oldest role-playing game, usually as a default, I have it just in, in case I need to. So um, I'll try not to make any comments or anything ab about this game because I don't want to do that for games that I haven't played just based on uh, hearsay. So I will say I just I quickly looked through it just at some of the pictures and. The, uh, the way the pages are set up in that are, are pretty good. Um, some of the artwork is pretty good. I, I think that's pretty cool. Piece of artwork of a, a group fighting some probably goblins. Um, some of the, the race uh, artwork is pretty good. Half orc, half elf. Your your staples they have a they still have the dragonborn and the the tiefling as main main ones in here. The gnome doesn't look too bad there. Definitely not a second edition gnome. Uh, like I said, dragonborn here. Uh, but some of the actually most of it's actually good. I don't know that I see it humans, but this. This halfling, I mean, her her feet are like smaller than her hands. And I'm not saying this is a, a thing uh, against the artist, but this is the reason why I don't like halfling. And I change them, at least their name and physical aspects in any fantasy game I game master. Help. Look cool, and even the the dwarf. I think this dwarf, uh, this female dwarf warrior, looks totally badass. That is an awesome, awesome picture there. We will go and we will do our our choosing. I guess it says choose a race, choose a class, but you need to roll some skills. I'm doing a rolling unless there's a definitive point by system. Um, huh. Creating a character. Quick build. Hit points and hit die. Three is determining ability scores. Now that's always weird because... Choose a race. Choose a class, determine ability scores, and yet they do ability scores right here, and then you have to go further to get to race and classes. So I'm going to go out of order because I think the ability score is what you roll, if you're doing the roll method, would allow you to then determine what race you might want to be and then also that would determine what kind of class you wish to be um so so they say let's see they, they say the six abilities you generate your character six ability scores randomly roll four six sided dice and record the total of the highest three dice on a piece of paper or scratch paper and do the highest three di uh, five more times so that you have six numbers. 
Okay, so right off they changed what previous ones have done, either by point by method or the base one just being roll 3d6 and then having tons of other method. They have put that that fourth die into into the actual code, and that's kind of the the main one. They do they have a uh, a variant for doing the the point by. But I've been rolling if I can roll for most of these, so I will do that. <laughs> so I guess I got a fifteen because it doesn't matter which die I drop. So take that. What if it doesn't? Uh, a highest three die, huh? Huh? Already. If I want to do raw, what do I do? I can't take the highest three because they're all the same. There's no highest three. Or there, yeah, all four are the same. So I already broke D&D uh, &D 5th edition, so uh, maybe I will just uh, stop here. <laughs> no. Oh, that would be too easy. Oh, man, I, I so want to do that, though. I so want to just stop and have that be the, the video. Where it's like, get broke the system. I want to make sure I'm doing this. I'll take it. This is roll four six sided dice and record the total of this spot. Or, sorry, and record the total of the highest three dice on a piece. Okay. So now I can do that, so that would be 13. Almost did the same thing, but I actually got a 9. The Constitution. Uh, 14. There is a 17. And a 16. So yes, I was rolling some really, really good dice, but if I would have been doing it an old method, it could have been that. And not near as well. And that could have happened with a lot of those. And that would have actually been possibly an 8, I think, if I remember correctly. So whenever you give it that extra die, you have a much better chance of getting tons of good stats. So um, Charisma, 16. Wisdom, 17. Intelligence, 14. Constitution 9, Dexterity 13, Strength 15. I could be a warrior, um, not a super good, but a decent, you know, a roguish, um, whole cleric, or like bard or something. I didn't want to do spells, but it looks like a dude. Um, so, uh, let's see if I can adjust some. Some things like if I'm a dwarf, what do how do I just so that would increase my constitution by two. Get me over the ten. And I think this is the uh, the the most recent game. The other ones they would have a positive and a negative. And here I think they just give the positives. I'm just doing human, human warrior, human warrior. Yes, I did not in any way, shape, or form going with my good stats, but I'm going to go human warrior.
which probably means I. So uh, probably humans don't get any type of bonus, but I'll just check to make sure. I'm going to change tieflings and make them not so. Um, what do I want to say? Doubleish. That looks more like a worm than a tail. Are those horns? I don't know. Antenna. We're definitely not doing it by uh, alphabetical order. Dwarves are first, then you go to like halfway elves, and then H's, and then D, Dragonborn, D, e. huh. Okay. Uh, I guess I could let's see. It's hard to make generalizations about humans, but your human character has these traits. Ability score. Your ability score is each increased by one. Wow. Like I said, I've never played this. They all increase. So if you get a bonus of like plus two for being something else, and yeah, you might get some special little perks and stuff, but like elves go up decks by two, the dwarves went constitution by two, and you get these other things, but still, wow, every single ability score goes up by one. And I guess they're going with uh, Forgotten Realms, just because I noticed the found primarily in the north west of Faerun. You can be different, like ethnicities. Huh. Okay. I'm. I'm sorry. I am just still kind of blown away by the fact that everything goes up by one just for being a, a human. And that's going to adjust a lot, like all but one of my all but my intelligence actually, if, if they do the same stat thing of every two points is a, a bonus in charisma. Um, everything else but intelligence or charisma went up one so that leaves me with the 16 14 10 17 18 17 so wow okay variant humans if your campaign uses the optional feat rules from chapter six i'm not using them i know people love feats but it's an optional rule in this game not using optionals um then they increase two of these attrib abilities, attributes by one, and then I guess they get some, some feats or something like that. Okay, so that's, that's why they took out their like extra human feet and just increased all ability score. Okay, so going to my ability modifier. Just to make sure that I'm not just going off of memory. Because I haven't played this game, but it's pretty much similar to the how the other ones were. It's a 12 and 13 and every two higher. So 16 is 3, 14, 2, 10 is nothing. That's better than the negative 1 I would have had. 
I will say just doing this character sheet, this character sheet is pretty straightforward. Um, so far, I, I like the way that they have these in boxes and then the bonuses kind of in the little oval under them instead of like off to the side and you get those little, all those little like equation things going on. So that's kind of, that's kind of cool. I will, I will admit that. So uh, oh, let's see. Then uh, intelligence is a seventeen. That was one of the two that didn't do any, didn't go up. The eighteen is a plus four, and the charisma is also plus three. So I got um, a plus three, a plus two, three, two, zero, three, four, three. So yes, I probably should be playing some type of cleric, but I'm not. I'm going to be a fighter because I don't want to do spells. Um, and I would need 300 experience to go up. And I don't remember what it was in 4th edition, but I do know it was like thousands in 2nd uh, edition and Beck Me and games based off of that, like Palladium. So seeing a 300, I know that that doesn't necessarily mean they get the same amount per adventure, but wow, that's like, that seems like a lot. So, get past all that. Classes, okay, which ones do they have in this main book? The Barbarian, the Bard, the Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock, Wizard. That's a pretty decent, uh, First classes. Um, so, trying to remember, they took away the the warlord, which I thought was a pretty cool uh, class in a fourth edition. I know a lot of people didn't like the whole aspects of marshals, uh, martial powers having uh like healing but the healing was done at, and hit points have always not just been you're getting hit and bleeding hit points have been considered an abstract thing of fatigue and dodging and and, and things like that so it kind of makes sense that uh, you got a a guy out there trying to rally the troops and and get them to to focus and, and stuff in my view so but like uh like before, these, I believe, the Bard and Barbarian were in the second book. Clerics were in the first book. Druids might have been in the the second. Fighters were there. Oh, I said warriors. I meant fighter. Uh, monks were in the third because it was like had it say Paladins were there. Rangers were there. Rogues, sorcerers, warlocks, wizards. They had the uh, the warlord. I can't remember if they had other ones. So, but they they do have a really nice uh, a really uh, what I want to say, nice spread. Um, interesting. Barbarians get a D12. Fighters get a D10. So I will be a fighter. I said warrior. I like to have warrior on my brain from other systems. But I will write fighter. I will correct that. Um, and I believe... Um, it should just be you get like that plus your de dexterity at first level, or not dexterity, your con modifier. So fighter, you d10, so that would be 10 plus 3. So go back. Huh, interesting. And their ability scores, when they're talking about it, they tell you what type of bonuses the, the different races get, and they do just have a human under every one of them giving a, a plus one. I thought I saw something about hit dice. Use for hit points. 
So without armor or shield, your character's AC equals 10 plus his dexterity mod. So I can go ahead and put that. And then we'll just know uh, whatever armor I would buy or be given would add to the armor class. So I got a 10, and then my dex is a plus 2. So I start off with a 12. Armor class. Which is just a couple of points off of the basic um, old old style D and D, where it was either a ten or an eleven, depending on if you're doing basic or advanced D and D or second edition, etc. So still, twelve is is really close, and that's with a bonus. So without any bonuses, I would be at a ten, which would be right there. Um, so it's not they they. Came out with a different way to calculate it, but it ends up being extremely similar to what it was. Starting equipment, we'd have uh, instead of taking gear given by your class and background, you can purchase your starting. Figure out where that proficient building determining ability scores. I did that. Okay, something like here. Ah, oh, okay, so they even do it further. I didn't get to the second part of rolling your attributes. The way that you do is you roll them, and then you decide where to pick them. So I could have put my wisdom and strength. So I will do that. Again, more ways to, to make the character you want. But for the people who like just rolling and letting the dice fall where they may, It kind of takes the randomness out of the random. <laughs> okay, so. And then I would probably want one of these other ones to be my constitution. So uh, let me get rid of my, switch my constitution and my uh, charisma. So my constitution will be a 17 and a plus 3. And my charisma will be that 10 at a 0. Okay, so now I can be that that fighter that I wanted to be and be a pretty decent fighter too. Okay, so after applying his racial benefits, which I did that, I increased everything by one. Look at this strength seventeen index. Blah 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 blah. Bob filled out his. Final hit points, 10, plus his constitution modifier, plus 3 for total. So I would have a 13 also for hit points. Hit point maximum is 13. Um, but that, they just add that, like, right there. And if you didn't understand it exactly. Oh, here it is. Okay. At first level, your character has one hit die, which is the d10 for the, the fighter. You start with hit points equal to your highest roll of that die. I'm going to say the highest number, but you know, that, that would be that table that I showed. Here. Okay, so if I look at a fighter, a master of martial combat skilled with a variety of weapons and armor, so D10, strength or dex. Going for the strength, strength and con. Let's find the fighter. Druids. Monk. 
the uh, Passover fire or these in alphabetical order. The races went completely in, in alphabetical order. Fighter here, okay, here we go. So at first level, I get a plus two proficiency bonus. I get some type of fighting style and second win. So creating a fighter. Quick build. You can make a fighter quickly by following these suggestions. First, make strength or dexterity your highest ability score. That would be my strength. Depending on whether you want to focus on melee or archery for finesse or finesse weapons. I definitely don't want to do finesse. Your next level highest score should be constitution, which I just made constitution. Or intelligence if you plan to adopt Eldritch Knight. I do not. Second, choose the soldier background. Okay. And it's background somewhere. They have a good table of contents. Not good enough. Do they have a good index? Oh, I guess that was like the, the human thing. I didn't want to do that. Okay. Oh no, that's a soldier background, not a, a ethnic group background. Only oh, like a background. Index with tiny, tiny words. Background. 11, 12, 13, 14. They have backgrounds highlighted. So I don't use Okay, I'm going to skip the background because it's probably either that ethnic thing or something else. The class feature, uh, you gain the following class features. Hit dice, which I had. Hit points at first level is 10 plus constitution. Um, hit points at higher level with a d10 or 6 plus your constitution. So you either get to roll or you do the, the one higher than, than half. All armor and shields, they have like proficiency or things like that. Other proficiencies. I guess I write all armor shields. Simple weapons. Martial weapons. No, no types of tools. I'm going to try this thing. Constitution. Okay, that sounds different than what I remember, so I'm not sure how saving throws would work here. But I get strength. In Constitution, so I'm completely guessing, but I don't know. I uh, circled in the little circle, and then I wrote the, the bonus. I might find out what that means, or I might not. So uh, equipment, I would start with chainmail or leather, armor, a longbow, and 20 arrows. So depending on if I wanted to be an archer or a fighter, and then I would choose between... A martial weapon and shield, or two martial weapons. I'd probably go sword and board. Then I would choose either a light crossbow and 20 bolts, or two hand axes. I'd probably go with the crossbow. 
and then an engineering pack or an explorer's pack and I'd have to look at what those were try to uh, figure out what I would want there but then that would be equipment just find find the uh, equipment thing and, and add my uh, chain and my shield to the armor class and would probably I don't know I'm guessing it'd be around an 18 or so probably so fighting style I don't want archery so I, I believe it said that I choose one fighting style and then I get second wind um, so I don't want arch archery defense gives you a plus one to AC dueling would give you a plus two damage with a, a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons great weapon You can re-roll the ones or twos. That would be if I'm doing like a two-handed weapon protection. Huh. They do not give a piece of... No, because defense is even just plus one while you're wearing armor. They do not give a sword and board fighting style. Second wind, um, similar to how it was in fourth edition, where you could uh, spend a type of action they call a bonus action, and you can he heal yourself that many uh, hit points once. These are all. Starting at different levels where you get more types of things. But I'm trying to think of my fighting style because they say when you, great weapon is two hand. Protection ah, is a wielding. So I guess I will be a protecting type fighter. So under um, features, maybe? Features and traits? What do they call these things again? Fighting styles? So that would be if they're within five feet of me, friend. I can use my reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. And you'd be building a shield, so basically I use my, myself as a shield. So you choose archetypes at third level, I guess, if you want to. I don't know if you have to. There's that Eldritch Knight that they talked about. Not going to be four, and that is Monk. So I might be close to, to finished. Um, well, plus two. Proficiency bonus, there we go. Plus two. Okay. The last thing I want to do before I just say, okay, I'm done. And here I can find out and do name, sex, height, weight, all that optional stuff. That's neat to have a sample. Uh, writing styles, languages, backgrounds. Oh, here's the background. I'm so glad they didn't list that page number. <laughs> Acolyte. Arlington Criminal. Interesting. I have to find the soldier and then actually see what that thing does. Okay, soldier. Skill proficiencies, athletics and intimidation. So I guess I can uh, maybe fill out those. Athletics and imitation. And again, I'm just circling those little circles. Tool proficiencies, one type of gaming set in a land vehicle. Huh.
So I would, I guess I would just come up with a game like card, blackjack maybe, or and then a land vehicle like I can drive a, a wagon. Equipment insignia of rank, a trophy taken from a fallen enemy, a dagger, broken blade, or piece of banner, said bone dice, or a deck of cards, a set of common clothes, and a pouch containing and gold. Especially during your time as soldier, you had a specific roll. Roll a d8. So let me get a d8. Which is an 8. So I was support staff. I was the cook, the blacksmith, or somebody like that. And then you can roll for like personality, trait, ideas, bond, flaws, destiny characteristics. Military rank. So I was a, or you can choose. I I like to roll. So I guess that part is it. So that's how the background work. That's interesting. Equipment. Multi-class. I don't want to do that. What I, what I'm looking for is our skills mandatory or not mandatory in fifth edition. They were optional. In second edition is non-weapon proficient. In third edition you got them. In fourth edition you got them. But I'm trying to look because I know they did things like feats and that they did as, as optional in fifth edition. So let me clarify in skills. Skill. Ability check. Skill check. The ability check. Okay. Ability check. Skill. 75. Using, okay, so they got athletics. Here we go, skill. I guess you just roll versus it, and then you get, you get your modifier. Oh, I guess it's an advantage or disadvantage on it. Proficiency, have a proficiency bonus determined by level. As determined in detail in Chapter 1, monsters also have this. Your proficiency bonus can't be added to a single die roll or other numbers more than one. Okay. So I guess I can try anything. It's just those ones that I'm proficient in do things. So, okay. It looks like I would just be filling out all the little leftover stuff that it would be... Um, I would get my armor, my weapons, my gear, and then put little bonuses, modifiers, and my proficiency bonuses for the things that I'm proficient in. Um, so, yeah, uh, actually that doesn't look like it's too hard if you don't do optional rules, which I didn't. So I will just go ahead and I will end that here. This is a D and D. Fifth edition, the current iteration of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, again, I've never played this. Um, I probably would feel comfortable in a group using this character, um, just based off of his stats alone and me knowing previous editions and um, being able to probably extrapolate on that. I'll give him a name. I will, he's a, a human warrior, fighter, sorry, I keep wanting to say warrior. Um, I will call him Durok. So Durok, the human fighter who rolled really, really, really well with the 4d6 drop the lowest and then got the bus plus one for being a human everything so 
I am Lehman Crafton Jr., a.k.a. Zorval Chan, Less Than Guru. And um, thank you for joining me. Hit like if you like this video. Hit dislike if you dislike this video. Ten more of these. Probably start doing a lot of Palladium <laughs> games because I have a ton of those. Maybe throw in uh, one of the other or both of the other uh, Star Treks here and there. Um, there is a game that I'm looking at, but I remember when I read it a long time ago, it confused me to, to no end. Um, I actually have two, two, two of those games, and I don't know if I want to uh, just sit down and, and try to make a character with the system I just completely uh, was, was in the past not able to, to uh, figure out. And then there's another game that um, looks pretty cool that I might try. But there might be, to fill in those gaps, uh, some more Palladium systems because I have a ton of those still. So again, um, thank you very much, and I will catch you later.